Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there folks, welcome you all to yet another Friday vlog of mine, another Friday has caught up with us people, yes it has, flagons up to you all, it has happened people, it has happened, I can't contain my excitement any longer than what was that, three seconds? <laughs> It happened, people. We got the PlayStation 5 reveal. We're diving straight in today, people. I'm not going to be spraffing on about me running this way. Well, I've hurt my leg as it happened, so I couldn't do running anyway. <laughs> so I'm not going to talk about me running. But the PS5 reveal happened last night, people. Just last night. And they, just to recap slightly, before this event happened, they were very, very clear about the fact that there was, this was going to be about games, people. It was going to be about games, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't they didn't come out and say we're not going to show you hardware but they were very like well, we'll just be showing off the games you know what i mean and i don't know if it was always the intent to show the playstation 5 in its physical form at that particular event now remember it was delayed by what was it a week uh or just over a week something like that and i'm wondering if there was two two events that said, it worked perfectly, and I thought it was an outstanding reveal. And I know there's been a little bit of... I mean, it's always a polarising effect, a launch. So you're never going to please everybody, whether it be the games or the choices of those games for the launch or for what's coming soon and all that sort of stuff. But for me, looking back on previous years, and, you know, I can't remember... A lineup as strong as that that was shown as a reveal. Uh, now we have to remember that what we're being shown isn't necessarily all coming out launch, but we'll have them. In fact, quite a few of them said 2021 on them, but some of those will be launch titles for sure. At least three of them, in my opinion. We'll get to the games later. I want to talk about the big daddy people. I want to talk about the reveal of the PlayStation 5 in its physical form as a console. And we, th honest to God, right, when this started, <laughs> the way it started, it was sort of closed in on this white shape and it was all kind of like slowly circling back in a way. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to be, sorry, to, I'm not going to be talking over the whole reveal. You'll see stuff behind me. I've basically downloaded and edited together all of the individual things. So I've not been lazy and just thrown up the reveal event behind me because I don't think people want to see all the in-between bits anyway. So I've, I've spent a lot of time downloading those videos and I, well, I say a lot of time, it doesn't take that long. You know, it took, took about half an hour maybe to download all of the videos that we're interested in. I haven't downloaded every single one, but I've got the ones, most of them, and, and the ones that I thought were interesting enough to talk about. Um, so yeah, so so when it started, there was it sort of you won't see this because I'm not showing the whole thing, but it, I honestly thought at the beginning we were going they were going to show the console right at the start. I was like, oh here we go, <laughs> and then it kind of midway through went to this thing where it was like, oh my god, uh, this is the one now. But it was another sort of. It was another little video of the DualSense controller. And I thought, here we go, here we go. They're going to show it right after this controller. And then they didn't. That was just them talking about the DualSense and all its funkiness. And then we got even more game stuff, which was all awesome. And right at the very end, there seemed to be this like... Because honest to God, right, we got to the hour mark. And I was like, well, that's it. Because it was only an hour long. They said it was about an hour long. But then it kept going and I was like, oh, OK, because <laughs> Yoshi came on and he, he was like, here's something really exciting. And he started talking about Demon's Souls, which we'll get to later. And I thought I was right at the end now. And then a whole bunch of stuff happened after that. And then right at the very end, and we could feel it was closing. There was this sort of it was the beginning of this weird video. And I thought, oh, my God, and my heart started pounding because I thought this actually looks like it's about to show us it. Like it's like a curtain opening this. <laughs> And sure enough, you know, not only did we see one console, but we saw two consoles, people, two of the buggers. So, yeah, now there's been a whole, it has been extremely polarised and I understand it, I do. I mean, it is just life, people, that there is no way of designing a console that everyone's going to like. I remember when the PS2, the PS2 was the last big sort of risk they took in 
the design of a console. It was it was an odd shape, uh, it, but now it's it's iconic. You know what I mean? It was like they went from this cute little box of a PS One that was just about the right size to be popping a CD into, didn't really do much else. Then went to the PS Two, which was this big black. You know, had to be bigger because it was more powerful, obviously. But it was this weird, odd shape with this theme behind it that I can't remember now. Something to do with space and... <laughs> I can't remember. And, you know, and in the end, it became this tiny little slim version. It was... I mean, I've got it in the attic. It's this... I mean, it's tiny. It's like... I mean, it's it's smaller than the original PS1. It's so thin. And So, yeah, I mean, it, I think even the PS2 was kind of polarizing to some extent. But now it's really iconic. Everything since the PS3, I love my PS3 Slim, which was the in between Slim, um, but you know I didn't think it broke any ground as such. It was just a nice looking piece of kit. The original one was not very good looking. The big fat thing was not good looking. The one that came after this Slim that I've got, which was the cheapy one, didn't look great at all. Then you had the PS4, which in my opinion didn't break any boundaries. It was just kind of a, it was a rectangle at a, an angle. <laughs> didn't really break any boundaries. So I'm really, really delighted that they've gone out of their way to give us something that's really been thought about. Now, not many people have noticed this, right? And I haven't seen anyone mention it, and I've looked about today. But the, and it was mentioned actually about one of the dev kits at one point. But if you look at the way they introduced that PlayStation, I'll have had this looping behind me probably as I rattle on people. But if you look at the way it's revealed, they start with a V. It sort of goes out like that. Now, if you look at the console, the console is designed in the shape of a V like that. And without any doubt, they had the, the 5 of the PlayStation 5 in mind when they designed that console. They thought, let's go with the, the V as the 5. And they've built that along with thinking about how this new airflow and how we're going to make it quiet. And, you know, all of the cooling systems that have to go with it. And if you look at the way they've designed it, it's extremely clever. They've made it look very slick, very cool. It's very, mo it's, well, it's very futuristic, you know, Detroit... Be Detroit become humans been thrown all over it obviously I mean I said that before it came out about the controller but you know that's that's fine now that I see the controller with the console looks great would I like a black version maybe I'd have to see it first I'd certainly like a black controller I just feel like my controller is going to get dirty quite quickly but you know um or you know the, the white might not stay dominantly white and go a bit cream <laughs> you know so I think without any doubt I think we'll get different color controllers my concern with that is I, th I have a feeling that maybe the white will always be there and it'll only be the black bits that change color you know i hope not because i'd like to have a black controller uh, or well or a, a blue controller which i'd had for the ps4 well i don't know that was kind of a ps4 thing the blue but anyway i mean I i'm delighted with the the way that it looks i know that a lot of people aren't but hey ho you can't please everybody and you certainly don't you, you look at the Xbox, have the same reaction that, you know, it's just a big sort of oblong cube kind of thing. It's like, you know, I, I you're never going to please everybody. And I think both of them had to build something that was effectively a tower anyway. And the PlayStation 4 is a tower. It can be sat on its side. They've, they've confirmed that. I think it has to sit in the stand to sit on its side, which is a bit odd. So either way up or down, you have to sit it on the stand in some way, I think, from the pictures that we've seen. Uh, but without any shadow of a doubt, it, it looks like it It looks far better sitting upright and as does the, the PlayStation Series... Uh, sorry, the Xbox Series X. So the PlayStation Series X, that's a whole other console, that people. So... <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm, I couldn't be more delighted. When I saw it, immediately I was like, fuck yeah, give me that right now. Like, that is my console for, for the future. And the more I'm seeing of, of just about everything to do with the PlayStation 5, I'm really, really stoked for it. I really am. And I really, please, you know, we don't know at the minute, but my God, please let that thing be silent. <laughs> I, if that thing makes the noise that a uh, PlayStation 4 does, then I'll be doing everything on the Xbox Series X But that I can do. But um, I, I've got a feeling, they've talked about the, the way that they're going to be cooling this thing. You can tell by the way it's designed that the airflow is going to be pushing out that top end. You can see the vents at the top 
and the whole airflow is going to be going up. I mean, it's almost similar to what uh, what Xbox have done actually with the Series X, with their funnel at the top there to let everything out. So I'm hoping that both consoles are going to be are going to be sweet in the in the in the very quiet area. I will be sorry to see the Xbox One X go because I love the design of it. But you know, hey ho, you need a bigger box for the more power. That's fine. Anyway, we'll not talk about Xbox people. This is a PlayStation. This is a PlayStation vlog. This one. So coming back round again, I I I couldn't have been more delighted. And when they showed it off, they, they kind of panned back, and you got that one console, and it was like, oh, that looks sweet. And then it kind of went to the side, showed you the side of it, and then it went back into the bead thing, and then it kind of showed, and then it panned back out again, and we saw two of the buggers, and then one of them had a disc, and one of them didn't. Now this was something not I don't think anybody predicted that. We kind of we were predicting it from Xbox because of this Lockhart rumor that was kicking around. Um Lockhart being the sort of Xbox Series S, say, for example, which is a cut down version. But PlayStation haven't made a cut down version. What they've done is they've just said do you want it with a disc or not a disc cuz a lot of people don't use the disc. Now we I put a poll up yesterday after we saw it to ask who would be buying one with a disc and one without and it has to be said that out of 15 people all of them said with a disc with a disc player so my personal opinion is like I, we don't know yet if there's a well i haven't read anything anyway but we don't know yet if it's simply there's no disc and that it's going to be cheaper because there's no disc because i don't think a disc drive in itself or a blu-ray disc player is going to make that much of a cost difference i can't see it being a hundred dollars for a disc for a blu-ray disc player so i would have preferred if they'd managed to say right if you buy the discless one you're going to get a two terabyte um ssd card for example because we know it's going to be a one terabyte ssd in the well from what they said for me that would have been a better solution because i think far more people would have gone for it if they felt that they could store a lot more on it with on the SSD directly and then dump the drive. But I think what they've done is they've they've brought out this other S this other one without the drive just to say, well, if you don't want to spend we don't know how much they are yet, but if you don't want to spend say five hundred dollars, uh, then maybe you'll spend four hundred and twenty dollars, you know. But I don't know, someone with four hundred and twenty dollars is probably able to push the boat out to five hundred, you know. <laughs> Which is what I'm saying, like, what's the point? I think with the Lockhart, they were talking about it not being actually as powerful as the Series X. It was actually going to be, say, you know, seven, eight teraflops, nine teraflops, whatever, instead of the 13 teraflops, and it won't have a drive in it. And it'll be, you know, 399 or whatever dollars instead of $500. So, or 499 So, you know, they're... they're push was a th well we haven't seen it yet but their push might be that they want a much cheaper console available for when they want to phase out the xbox one altogether so it's going to be really interesting to see what that actually means the discless is it literally just without the disc it sounds like it is that's the way that they've sold it to us they do look a little bit very very different at the bottom as well because there is that little bump that comes out of the one with the disc and it's much much sleeker without it so very interesting Aaron Brew my son he's he's already in his mind saying I'm going discless and I'm gonna go through what discs I've got and decide which ones I'm willing to pay for again and then I'm gonna you know sell on the ones that I don't want or whatever he wants to go completely discless and everything you know blu-rays and and games and music and all that stuff he just wants to be discless completely so he's very very keen on the the one without a disc so i yeah i mean i don't think anybody saw that i don't remember anybody talking about i think they'll do a second one i think everybody assumed that microsoft would because they had to come up with something that was going to compete you know at a, a lower price level when sony didn't have to but they're yeah, very interesting that they've done it and then it panned out of that and they've, they've done what they did with the playstation 4 as well they've uh it panned out and it was showing you all of the... They showed you the two consoles, the controllers. It showed you the charging unit, which I have for the PS4. It doesn't... We don't know whether my charging unit for the PS4 will still work with the, the new one. I'm hoping that it will. Because then I might not have to buy it. The only difference being the new one's white and my own's black. But I would happily stick with the one I've got and not have to buy the new one. So there's the, it's a, you know, the charging unit I'm talking about. It's got the double your seat in the pictures. But it's got the... the you can put two controllers in it and they charge on the fly 
Uh, it showed the new headset, 3D audio headset, and uh, what was the name? It wasn't just 3D audio. What was it called? Um, Pulse 3D wireless headset. It looked really sweet. Everything was white, of course. Uh, it came with a HD camera and the remote control. Yeah. So it came with the whole the whole set that the old one, sorry, the PS4 came with when it first launched. It had all of all of those. As I remember, it had all of those. I'm not overly sure about the headset, but it certainly had the dual controller. Pretty sure it had a remote control. And it definitely had a camera, although it wasn't that great. So they're obviously punting the fact it's a proper HD camera on this one. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's awesome. They've got a whole set of kit for you to buy if you if you want to buy it all. I am curious to see if there is other coloured controllers available at launch. I have a feeling that the blue controller for the PlayStation 4 might have been available at launch. So it'll be very interesting to see if they do push any other controller at launch or whether they just push out, you know, this is what it is and that's what you're going to you're gonna have to buy. I don't think there'll be different coloured con consoles at launch. I think they might bring them in later. My only concern with what they've done is is that there was already a bit of a worry that they might not be able to make enough for people to order. Now, they said there wasn't, but now that they've, they're building two consoles instead of one, and one of them doesn't have a disc, and I've just done a poll, and nobody on that poll was going to buy the discless one, are we going to end up that there's not enough ones with discs, and the only ones that you can actually get hold of are the ones without a disc? And that's my worry, that I won't be able to get one for day one because there's not enough with a disc drive in it to get one. So it's going to be really interesting to see if they've, they've actually thought about that and what their market research has been like. I mean, it could very well be that they know they don't have to make a lot of the discless ones. But that's my only concern. My only concern out of that whole night was I wonder if I'm going to be able to get my hands on one now that they're building two of the two different ones. The one that I want might not be enough of. But anyway, I plan to pre-order the minute we get the nod that it's available for pre-order. And uh, super stoked, people. I, I, honestly, I lo it couldn't have ended better if it had tried, in my opinion. And, you know, obviously I'm in the, the, I'm in the zone of loving it. There's a lot of people that feel deflated because they didn't like the design. But hey, you know, no design is going to please everybody. But I love it. The more I look at it, the more I love it. So I've been weighing up over the last day as to where I would actually put them if I want to stand them up. Because obviously I've got a, I've got a TV unit at the minute with, with these slot in like this. So I'd need to find some way of putting them like that. So we shall have a think about it, people. I'll worry about that when I get my hands on them. There's always somewhere for them to go. Yeah, so absolutely brilliant. I, I could not be happier. And I'm, I'm super excited that for me, I don't think they could have launched that any better. Given the circumstances that they couldn't do anything live, I thought it was an outstanding night. And I know a lot of people have said it was mediocre, but for me, I'm about to read through these games like, and for me, what on earth are you expecting on launch of a, of a console? I mean, I, I, the titles that they were punting out were just like, what? And people are like, it was mediocre. It's like, the more I look back on what we saw, the more I'm like, shit, yeah, that looks amazing. And, you know, you've got to remember, you're not going to have, like, you can't have every amazing title launch. Like, it's not how it works. <laughs> I mean, nobody in their right marketing mind wants to push every top game they've got on the launch of a console. It takes away from the actual game. Like, you want at least one major exclusive to launch with. And last time it was uh, Killzone Shadowfall. Still a fantastic game. Still holds up visually. Stunning to this day. It's never been uh, mastered for the pro, but it, it still looks incredible. So it's funny. Well, it's not funny. It's it's interesting that Guerrilla are still the company that launched the title for, for PlayStation. Last time it was Killzone. This time it's it's uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, something of the world. <laughs> We'll get to it, people. I've got a list. So, I don't know what people were looking for out of that. But for me, when we when we run through these games now, it's like, what the shit? We've got to bear in mind, though, that they're not all at launch. You know, quite a lot of them are 2021. And not all of them are exclusive, but a lot of them were. A lot of them were. I'm going to have a sip of this. Flagons up, people. My 
goodness me, that was awesome. Right. Right, we've done all that hardware stuff, Stephen. Moving on. Okay, so, well, the first thing I've noted down, actually, is did all my predictions from the last vlog... Not the last vlog, was it the vlog before? The vlog, with, before, the vlog, I think it was two weeks ago, when I thought it was about to happen. And the answer is yes, all my predictions did come true to a point, because we still don't know what the release dates are, but I still think my predictions are going to come true. So I'm not, I'm not reading these out in order of the way that they were shown. I've, I've literally ran through the videos on the PlayStation site just to remind myself of all the games. Well, actually, I jotted down the ones I remembered, and then I went on and went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I've done is, rather than download the entire thing and then splice it all, I've downloaded every single individual reveal video that I thought was of interest. And I, before I, I'm actually recording later than I would. And if I'm slurrier, it's because I'm further on in my beer than I normally would be. Because <laughs> I started my beer while I was watching the videos. Uh, I think I'm fine. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog is it or the quick brown dog jumped over the lazy fox can't remember one or the other <laughs> hey how now brown guy i think i'm fine i'm fine so i'm going to rattle through i've kind of broken them down into little sections so that we can run through them and what i'll do is i'll put the i'll put the clip up behind me i'll try and chat about as much as i remembered so basically i watched every video again just before recording this to see what sinks in refresh my memory on what got me a little bit excited and so forth so the first thing i'm going to do actually i'm going to talk about the the one the games that were very kid like or kid orientated because i think it's really interesting that when a reveal happens when you look at the the chat or the feeds or whatever's going on which i don't when i'm watching it but you see the stuff afterwards and i'm guilty of it a little bit as well they go into this section where it's all kind of not triple a titles and it's all this sort of kid stuff thrown in or weird you know art noir type stuff or <laughs> film noir type stuff or whatever and um i'm guilty of it myself of going oh well, this is a bit of a downslide <laughs> because you want to see you know the big hitters coming out but not every game can be a big hitter we've got to remember that not everybody wants to see that well kids can't play those games the big you know the big hitters are usually bloody 18s so it's it's actually really nice to see that they've not just come out with knack three and that's it you've got to live with it and you know we're, we're looking at i mean the the ones that i've jotted down here one of them's a massive big hitter anyway which is ratchet and clank rift apart and that came up really early on they had weirdly they had this gta 5 like <laughs> started with gta 5 i thought oh no this isn't good that's three consoles old for effect's sake what are they doing starting with gta 5 but it was actually punting the fact that everybody was going to get it free on playstation 5 i think so they can carry on playing the online stuff so fine fair enough and uh, it's obviously very popular the online thing but then after that everything everything uphill but Ratchet and Clank, I think, was almost immediately after that, or not far after it. And, I mean, I have to say, the minute I saw it, I was like, yes. And that was one of my predictions as well, Ratchet and Clank game. And Ratchet and Clank will forever be, well, I mean, that and Jack and Daxter. But Jack and Daxter had a little bit more of an edge to it than than uh, Ratchet and Clank, I think. But Ratchet and Clank, when I say edge, maybe, you know, got a little dark in places. But it was still, still a kid's game. But... I'm saying that. I mean, they're probably like for like. But, you know, Ratchet and Clank uh, is Insomniac, isn't it? And and uh, Jack and Daxter was Naughty Dog, I think. So, you know, we've not seen Jack and Daxter in quite a while, other than they were HD'd a while back. But Ratchet and Clank, there was a, a redo of the Ratchet and Clank original, which we got it on the PS4. And it was a massive hit. And it looks absolutely... I mean, the PS4 one looked fantastic. I couldn't believe the fun I had in that game. I was meant to go back to it and try and platinum it because it's not that bad a platinum, actually. And I've never quite got back to it yet. So I will at some point, I think. But when this came up, I mean, you got... I mean, I'm... You never quite know how blown your mind is going to be at something that isn't a triple a title and there are quite a few of these games we're going to talk about just look stunning i mean they look amazing on the ps5 and ratchet and clank is one of those i mean it, it you see like i mean it looks like i mean it sounds stupid to say it looks real <laughs> i mean yeah it's a walking fuzzball and stuff but 
it looks real. You know what I mean? It just looks like real things on the screen. It looked that amazing. It was just so clear and crystal and everything was just... I mean, the the, the gameplay, the, I couldn't see any pop. But when I watched it back, it's hard to tell when you're doing the streams. The streams are quite pixelated sometimes. But when I watched it back today, I mean, there's no pop in. There's nothing happening in the distance. It's all just crystal clear. I mean, the visual elements are all crystal clear. The gate, that video you're seeing behind me the clip doesn't show a huge amount of gameplay there was a second clip which did which i haven't got actually but you know this shows a tiny piece just before they go onto the tail part of it but it just looks amazing i mean the graphically outstanding and when it does drop into gameplay there was literally no difference between a cutscene and gameplay it was just seamless literally dropped on i think it was a boat or something and started fighting before it cuts back again and the two brilliant characters, absolutely stoked that they've done another Ratchet and Clank. And then along with that, if we're staying with the kids, the kids stuff, there was uh, Sackboy's Big Adventure, which is from the Little Big Planet thing. Which I mean, the, I mean, just I'll talk about this generically rather than talk about each game. So they had Sackboy's Big Adventure, they had uh, Astro's Playroom. And they had Bug Snacks, who who was made by the Octo Dad developer. And those were all, those are all really massive kid games. There's another one further down, which I'm not included in kids, but it probably is more of a kid type thing. But it's a little bit more of a grown up theme, ish, more of an RPG kind of feel to it. And if I can find it in the list, we will get to it. Was it Kino Bridge of Spirits? I think it was. Yeah, Kena, Kena, Kena or Kena, Kena Bridge of Spirits it was called. It had a really like Zelda-y feel to it. When you when it actually got into the fighting and stuff, it was almost like a, well, it's a girl that you're playing as and she's got this sort of wand, sort of staff wand type thing. Cross between a staff and a wand, I guess. And, you know, she's doing all sorts of guiding things around and then it eventually cuts into the fighting bit where she's using it like a bow and and doing all sorts of fighting type stuff and rolling around. Had a really Zelda feel to it. And I was really quite impressed with that. But I've, I've kept that for further down. Um, but if you take on Ratchet and Clank, Sackboy's Big Adventure, Astro's Playroom and Bug Snacks. They were all clearly focused in on the, on the children or slash kid market, whatever you want to call it. And I think it's brilliant. I think a console coming out with all of that stuff. I mean, hopefully a lot of that stuff will be at launch. I can't remember what was 2021 and what wasn't. I still think Ratchet and Clank is going to be launch day. I think I, th I still think that's going to be a, a launch title. They have to. I think they have to launch with a big kids title one way or the other. And it's nice to see that it's a, a Ratchet and Clank and not a Knack Three. They could easily have just said, "Yeah, you know what? We'll do a Knack Three. It's just easy." But to get us Insomniac back on board, and and do a Ratchet and Clank when they're obviously already wanting to crack on with Spider-Man 2. And there is a Spider-Man game in here, well, addition in here, but, you know, I think it's they maybe have two teams. A lot of studios have two teams, but when, when Spider-Man's been so successful, it's nice to know that studio likes going back and revisiting Ratchet and Clank and bringing us new versions of that game. Because you've got to remember, like, Ratchet and Clank's now two generations back. And we, we got... A remake of the first one last gen but it's the only ratchet and clank we got i think that's uh did we get any remasters i can't remember but we certainly only got one remake in the whole of last gen all of the ratchet and clanks came before that were on the i think we're all on the ps3 was the one on the ps2 it must have been but it was certainly two on the ps3 there might have been one on the ps2 i can't remember or the ps1 even but um, a terrific, terrific IP, Ratchet and Clank, and most certainly shouldn't die. It's interesting that they seem to be, because I'm sure, I'm saying, it was Ratchet and Clank Rift Time, was it? Can't remember now. I've lost it, people. Not got my glasses on. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, sorry. I, I, I have a feeling that that is a remake, right? It's not a new title. Someone let me know in the comments below. I thought there was one called Rift. Or was that Rift in Time or something? I thought there was one called that. So I, I'm now not I'm not sure if it's a remake or an actual new title now. But it, irrelevant. It looks amazing. I can't remember, you know, half of what happened in the old ones. 
And um, I, I'm super stoked, super stoked. But I love the fact they've got these other ones. The Astros Playroom actually looked amazing as well. And I'm not sure what was going on in Bug Snack. Seems to be a world all about food. Uh, all different creatures all seem to be made up of food types and all that sort of stuff. So it was it was like three really different types of kid game. And like, you know, I mean, the the stat boy, uh, the sack boy one was a RPG type. Uh, sorry, not an RPG, Steve, what are you talking about? It was a platformer. Astro Playroom seemed to be making a lot of use of, of the dual sense. It was trying to suck up all the power of that dual sense and try and give us all what, all of the things we can feel and expect out of that, which is really cool. So they've honed in on that. And Bug Snacks obviously isn't a, a Sony studio. It's the Octodad uh, people that made that. But yeah, it's a great lineup. I'm pretty sure Bug Snacks must be coming on. I, I'm not saying for sure. Was Octodad cross gen? I can't remember people. I'm making shit up now, but that may well be a cross gen, a uh, cross platform thing. So yeah. Anyway, I wanted to just talk about the kids part of it because I think it's really important that that kids get a good library of games because those are the you know those are the future gamers people you know, and and those are the kids that are going to come up and and love all the stuff that comes next as they get older and the, the more stuff they can play obviously. So it's really nice that they're making all this stuff to get children interested, and they're fun and light and there's no darkness to them you know. It's really nice to see it. So there's a few I've got a big hitters list here. And let's crack through those and then, uh, bloody hell, this is going to be a long one, people. We're half an hour in and I've not even talked about half the games yet. <laughs> okay, so one of the uber exciting ones, and again was on my prediction list. Demon Souls, it got announced, people. Sadly, we didn't see any gameplay footage, but it was in, well, it was in engine footage, I think, that we saw, but it certainly wasn't gameplay. But it looked incredible. I mean, Blue Point have done an amazing job with that scene that we saw. I mean, bloody hellfire! It looked cracking, and it kind of, you know, it, it was really vague when it started off, and it was like, "What's this? What's this?" And you could kind of tell it was this dark vibe, and everyone was like, "Oh my god, this could be Demon Souls." And well, it was that, or like, is it Demon Souls? Is it Elden Ring? Is it? Ooh, what is it? And sure enough, you heard the sort of oh, type music and. You know, guy dangling from his legs being dragged through the air, soul type thing. And, um, it, yeah, I mean, you could kind of get the vibe for it. And then it didn't tell you what it was right until the very end of the clip. But you kind of got the impression that it was Demon's Souls all the way through the clip by that point. But it looks incredible. And that is a that is a major... If they can bring that with Ratchet and Clank on day one, that is two massive titles. It was Yoshi that, that announced that as well, Yoshida. And he said this is really close to his heart. So he's clearly been pushing to get Demon's Souls remastered, well, remade. It's not a remaster, it's a remake on the PlayStation 5. And it may be something he'd wanted for the PlayStation 4, but obviously they already had Bloodborne and other things going on. So it's really, really good to see that. And of course, with Bluepoint doing it, From Software's probably advised in some capacity, but they've not had to take their time to, to make that remake. Blue Point are renowned for making great remakes. So, you know, they can be left to do their job and From Software can crack on with the Elder Ring stuff that they're doing and all that. Um, so, yeah, super stoked to see that coming around. I, I really, really, be really nice to see some gameplay, but, you know, let, let's face it, the gameplay is going to be what Dark Souls and Demon Souls gameplay is. <laughs> but it'd be nice to see how good it looks, though, you know. It looks, I mean, it, that clip looked amazing. It was really, I was really stoked after seeing that. And again, this is in this is not the order that we saw everything in, by the way. So the, the Horizon Two, which is actually called Horizon Forbidden West, that just looks incredible. Again, it's on my prediction list, and I said day one we're going to have Horizon, we're going to have Demon Souls, we're going to have Ratchet and Clank game, and all of those games were shown off, and none of those games showed a date, whereas a lot of these titles were reading out had t coming 2021 on them. So I think those three games are coming on launch day, people. They're just not telling us yet. <laughs> I mean, they want to keep something for us to get excited about later. So my three predictions from my video a couple of weeks back are looking like they're going to come true. 
Horizon, uh, Horizon uh, Forbidden West. It's interesting that, that it's not called Horizon Zero Dawn 2 because Horizon Zero Dawn was clearly the beginning of that adventure. Horizon Forbidden West is the next part. And so it's kind of Horizon 2 rather than Horizon Zero Dawn 2, which is what everyone's been talking about. So Horizon 1, Zero Dawn, Horizon 2, Forbidden West. So yeah, that's quite cool. I like that. So it's very interesting that they've moved... I mean, I guess maybe you have to to keep the interest up, but they could have stayed in the same type of environment, just built another story in it. But they've dragged it toward the sea, which is really quite cool. And you see a lot of underwater stuff going on. I have to say, people, I mean, Horizon Zero Dawn was a good looking game. This is just stunning. <laughs> it's just outrageously good looking, people. I can't begin to tell you how excited I am about how good stuff looks on the PS5. My bloody God, people. Everything I was looking at, it was like love signs in my eyeballs. It was like... <laughs> it just looks spectacular. It's just like, what the shit? And this this is one of the prime examples of what we saw yesterday. I mean, it just looked incredible. And then they have all the underwater swimming sections. And she had this sort of breathing facility on her face for when she was underwater. Which I hope means that you don't have to keep going to the surface. You know, like a bit like a Jedi's thing. You can just swim about and not worry about having to go up all the time or run out of air. But it looked incredible. And all the, the all normal themes in that. I noticed that the guy who seems to get everywhere who was in Fringe, black guy who was in Fringe. I'm forgetting his name, that's terrible. He's, he's been in everything. He was in Fringe and he was in... Um, I think he was in Quantum Break and he was in... He's definitely in Destiny as one of the main characters in that. Um, yeah, but he's... Uh, you see him in it and he's, he's just so recognisable. When they, when they do the... You know, sometimes you can take an actor and not make them look like them, but they nearly always make him look like him. And he's such a recognisable guy. Um, someone can let me know in the comments below what his name is. I've been terrible people, terrible. But yeah, so he's in it, which is good. It's good to see those sort of characters coming in. And he's a great actor, so I'm glad that, that he's come into the fold. I don't know, he couldn't tell from it whether he was a goodie or a baddie. Uh, he seemed to be facing a lot of the red demon-y type creatures. So it could be that he's a baddie. The interesting thing about that story is, and I didn't get... I, I have not finished Horizon Zero Dawn because I just... I got so far into it and I just f when it comes to RPG type games a lot of it lives or dies on whether or not I'm interested in what I'm picking up I'm interested in what I'm changing into gear I'm interested in changing weapons and none of those things were interesting because once you'd been to one person that sold stuff you'd pretty much been to everyone that sold stuff for about 10 hours <laughs> And nothing changed. And it also seemed to be the case that you had to change bloody gear every time. You know, it's like, oh, well, I've got to wear that outfit to fight that creature. And I've got to wear that outfit. to. Do. It's like, you don't want to have to do that. You want to, you want to be able to mix and match so that you can, you know. So it all was a little bit flat when it came to the proper RPG elements of that game. However... Um, it was really fun to play. The story was really interesting and I was disappointed in myself. I didn't just crack in and try and get the story finished. So I think what I'll do is I'll wait until the PS5 comes out and then I'll probably try and play them back to back so that I can see the full story through. Um, but it's interesting that the story, when you see the story described on that, she's trying to stop the spread of this disease effectively, which is the red stuff you see all over the place. And it's destroying the planet. And I didn't really twig to that vibe playing it in the original as to, or maybe it wasn't as strong in the original, but as to how true that is of what's happening in our world at the moment and how in danger our planet is from plastic, especially. Plastic is spreading across this planet just like that red stuff is. And it's sickening to see just how bad it is when you actually go out your way and watch the videos it is just awful people it our planet is in such an awful state and horizon is effectively telling that story she's trying to stop the spread of that stuff and you know that we should be trying to do the same is basically what i'm saying 
it, I think it'll touch home that story because it is parallel to the, the problem we have at the minute. Because make no mistake, the plastic problem we have on this planet at the moment could well destroy it if we don't fix it. Uh, interestingly, I wore these last week as well. These two bands that I've got here are from a online company called 4Ocean. That's the number 4Ocean.com. Um, they effectively... What they do is they have a massive fleet of, of ships that are specifically designed to collect plastic from hot spots where the plastic collates around the oceans, on the beaches and multiple places around the world. And they do that via funding on this website. And when you buy one of these bead bracelet things... Um, I think they're $20, something like that. They have loads of different colours and each colour is is assigned to a sea creature. You know, there's a shark one, there's a turtle one, there's a, all sorts. And yeah, obviously they're not worth $20, but you're paying for them to clean up our, our planet. And I bought these two over a few months. And, you know, if you can find some way in helping that fight with plastics, people uh, absolutely find a way of doing it. If you can't do it in person, then try and feed some money to somewhere that is, is helping with that job. Because it is dire, people. Anyway, moving back to gaming. I just thought I'd throw that in there. So Horizon looks spectacular. Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, then we got... Uh, well, we also got Spider-Man. Which, when it came up, I was like... Because the, the character in the original white guy character that pops up in this one is a black guy who's apparently in the original one, Miles Morales. I haven't finished the original one. Shocker. Uh, again, a game that did not... The problem with that game was I, I should have just played the story. <laughs> Instead, I tried to clear the map and then got bored doing all the side stuff because it wasn't particularly interesting. Um... So I need to go back and finish it and just play through the story. Spider-Man Mars Morales. I was really la I, was, I was really like not laughing, but just shaking my head today that I saw people going, oh, all oh, right, so it's not Spider-Man 2 then. It's like, how on earth did you think that was Spider-Man 2? <laughs> the guy's in the original game playing that character and it's clearly like, you don't call the next Spider-Man Spider-Man Mars Morales. Like anyone with half a brain knows you don't call it that. <laughs> It was quite clearly going to be a DLC or some sort of run-up. Almost like an infinite first light or something. Or last light. Was it first light? First light. It was quite clearly not Spider-Man 2. You know, I mean, it maybe will get the, the black guy playing the Mars Morales character playing the character in the next one. That's fine. But that was clearly not Spider-Man 2. Like, anyone that is shocked and disappointed at that is just not... <laughs> You're not sane, is what you're not are, people. All right, I love you still, but <laughs> there's no hate on this channel. But you're nuts. <laughs> Who on earth thought that was Spider Man 2? Come on now, you can't be having Ratchet and Clank and Spider Man on the same night, people. Not a full one, <laughs> not from the same company for gold's sake. Anyway, it looked uh, it looked great and, and what have you, but I don't know. I mean, I, I don't get super stoked. I, the last time I got excited for Spider-Man was when the first Spider-Man movie came out uh, with Tobey Maguire in it. And I was just like, what the shit? I loved it. it was just amazing. And games-wise, there was a PS2 one, I think, that I, I really liked at the time. And then pretty much after that. But then I have talked about this before and I've got pretty... I've, got, I've fallen pretty flat on superhero stuff because it's just so awfully saturated now you can't move for it it's all over tv it's all over the cinema it's just like nothing is nothing is wow anymore because it's just too much wow <laughs> it's like even when you watch it it doesn't look real anymore you know like probably the i don't know i was trying to think of the last one that i probably thought was was awesome but I think the last superhero film that I watched, because I was so surprised that I liked it so much, was the original Captain America. Because I expected not to like it at all, and I loved it. It was really, really good. Uh, the, the last one I enjoyed was Thor Ragnarok, because it just went completely off kilter. And it was brilliant. I enjoyed that. And Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. Probably the three. But anyway, I've fallen a bit flat on the old uh, 
the old superhero front. So maybe that's part of the problem as well. But it looked great. I mean, the, from what we saw of the little that we saw of it, it looked great as a DLC. It'll be great. Interesting if it is a first light thing where it can be played by itself or whether it is actually a, 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 a DLC to the game. So you have to own the game. We don't know. I don't think. I don't think they've specified that yet. But hey, you know, to give Spider-Man fans a, a reason to go back into that game, that's awesome. I, they do stuff like that for Jedi Fallen Order, I'll be over the bloody moon. Like, I wouldn't be moaning that it wasn't Jedi Fallen Order 2. I'd be saying, yeah, brilliant, give me a reason to go back into that game. Um, so that happened. Uh, you've got Gran Turismo, I'm not going to talk too much about this, but Gran, Gran Turismo has been missing a long time from, from what I remember. And it Gran Turismo was the daddy of racing games. Nothing could touch it at one point. And it kind of, I think part of the reason was maybe they just didn't, their heart wasn't in it a lot anymore, but it did kind of get overtaken by Forza and Forza Horizon. Um, the Forza's kind of led the way in racing games for such a long time now, and it looks spectacular. But I tell you, that Gran Turismo game looks like it might well give the, the standard Forza game a run for its money as a, as a, a proper racing, racing game now. It looked incredible. The inside of the cars and everything, the outsides even looked amazing. It looked real. And, I mean, to be fair, Forza, so do they. So, you know, I'd have to play both to know one's better than the other. But Forza's definitely the, the leader in that at the moment. But Gran Turismo looks like it's back with our vengeance, people. That looked absolutely amazing. It was interesting that it, it wasn't the most interesting of clips, sadly. <laughs> I mean, some videos, and I talked about this to Aaron Brew, like, if a game's not overly interesting <laughs> to show off, you'll get rap music with it. <laughs> it's like, you can guarantee, right, any sports game, rap music. COD, rap music. <laughs> when they're showing it off, this is. Um, if they feel like the gameplay is not exciting enough just seeing the gameplay, rap music. You know, like, there's always a place for rap music when you try to make a game look, ooh, you know what I mean? Because the music just gives you a buzz. And then when you, you see it without the music, it's like, all oh, right. <laughs> the one game that probably could have used some rap music and didn't get any was for the uh, the Gran Turismo show-off. Because it reached a point where it was literally just... And unlike Forza Horizon, is it, that goes around the towns and cities and stuff, that has interesting backdrops. This was kind of a race course, so it didn't really have much other than some grass and... It looked amazing, but, you know, it could have done with a bit of music behind it, I think. Anyway, I think it's going to gonna give Forza a run for its money once again. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo was shown off finally, properly. Because I don't think we'd seen any gameplay of that up until now. And... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was just the concept we've seen and, you know, a bit of the world, but no real gameplay. And everyone was wondering what it was going to be like because the guy that is involved in making it, an overseer, if you will, not the director. The director of that game left. It was a sort of cute Chinese woman that she was on E3 at one point. I'm not going to remember her name, but she was on E3 at one point. And everyone loved her. And then not long after she'd announced Ghostwire, she, she went off. So I don't know whether it just became too much or whether there was design differences or what, but she went off and I don't think she's doing anything at the minute. <laughs> it's just what I'm off. Um, but the guy who's who's overseeing it is it Makami? I'm not going to get his name right. But he's the guy that created the uh, the Resi games. He created Resi 4. Um, I think Resi 4 was his last Resi game he was involved with. And then Evil Within, he came back and did that. So he's the guy that's brought us those massive massive titles he's done a lot more than that but those are the ones that i'm familiar with and so i was really stoked to see this game because i thought oh what we're going to get and it's really interesting because i was expecting a third person over the shoulder or something now i think the reason it's not third person is because of the style of play that he's gone with because it was interesting in that entire clip there was no weapons it was all it was all magics of some description uh, Ghostwire in itself, the word ghost means that we're probably dealing with spiritual type things anyway. So I think because it was all kind of hand powers and stuff, it made more sense to do it in a first person environment, uh, sort of look and feel, than it was to do it in a third person. It did, however, fall a bit flat because only because of my expectation of wanting another third person type thing. I think that's unfair on what they've done. I think. Well, I'll need to say far more of, of what's going on in the game to see whether it's going to, I'm going to be really put off by it. Again, that said, though, I didn't enjoy Resi 8 anywhere near as much as I enjoy Resi 2 Remake or whatever. 
or Evil Within because I much prefer the third person vibe of those games. I just feel like they are... For me, it doesn't feel like a proper Resi game unless it's third person. You know, and you can throw an umbrella sign in places and you can throw a character in, but it still doesn't feel like a Resi game, you know. Um, we'll talk about the new Resi game in a sec, though. So, yeah, so it was really interesting to see the Ghostwire stuff and the powers looked incredible. The city looked incredible. The demon-y type characters, ghosts, maybe, they look great. Real wide variety of visuals and clearly, I assume, everything is set in Tokyo. So how on par with how the city actually is and stuff, I don't know if I've been to Tokyo, but it looked fantastic. And the powers looked spectacular when he was throwing his arms around and pushing things away and flames flying out or some sort of light power flying out. Yeah, it looked absolutely crazy. Uh, it only fell flat because I kind of was expecting one thing and got something else. So I, I need to take a step back and then I'll see some more of that game and see whether it's something I'm going to be excited for. Um, ooh, following nicely on, people. Resident Evil The Village. And people were right in the rumours because the village part is uh, V111, which is 8. So Resident Evil 8. Um... Interestingly, the next game that they're remastering is Resident Evil 4. And, well, remaking, we should say. And I did a poll on this, as some of you will remember, and I said, who would have preferred Veronica X remade first before Resi 4? Because Resi 4 still holds up pretty well, you know? And a lot of people want to see Code Veronica X, one of my, probably my favourite Resi game. Because I have a lot of love for... A lot of time spent with that game. And just a lot of fond memories playing it. And I'd love to see a remake like 2 for that game. And anyway, nearly... It was like 65... 60 something versus... 20 something. Can't remember. But it was it was by far Veronica X that people wanted more. So it's interesting that they've done 4. Because I would have thought their own marketing would have told them that. But... If you look at what they've done with the village thing and look at what Resident Evil 4 was as a village thing, I think there's a very good reason that they're doing these two things at the same time. And I think, and I hope, and I pray, there's a song there somewhere, that we will still get Resident Evil Code Veronica X afterwards, once that's calmed down. Because I think if they don't connect in some way, they most certainly have the same vibe, the same village theme going on if you look at that trailer which you'll have seen behind me there's a lot of things going on in that trailer that make me think that it's gone it has gone more than resi 8 did it's gone back to that puzzly type feel where there's things you need to do to get through there to get you know uh, in the way that resi used to do it in four for example um so yeah i'm really interested to see what's going to come of those two probably i'm more likely to be buying and playing the Resi 4 Remake, mainly because I want to play Resi 4, being able to move and shoot. That's about the only thing that isn't in the the HD. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just being able to move and shoot. So, um, yeah, super stoked. I mean, it looked amazing, and I certainly got me more stoked than 7 did. 7 didn't get me as stoked as 8. I think I might have got my 8s and 7s confused earlier in that conversation, but 7 didn't get me as stoked i did finish that when i and came to stay with me one night we took turns and i got it finished on my my system and so i've seen that through and it i got a lot of fun out of the game but it just didn't feel like a proper resi game to me so i think for me this one looks a lot more resi 4 so it might interest me a bit more certainly resi 4 remake which we've not seen yet is definitely going to get my interest up because it's third person again Super excited for Resi 8. Big hitters, people. Hitman 3 was announced. I still have, and I've shown it a number of times, and I'll be showing it again when my statues arrive to put my steel cases in between the bookends. I have the steel book version of the last Hitman game. It was released episodically, the last one, but this has all of those episodes on it as one game. Kind of hoping they've not done the episodic thing again. I think it's a bit of a cop-out, to be honest with you. Um, it's almost like... I understand a studio needing to make money while they're making games. I think there's a better way to do it than give you a game a piece at a time. So it's never been a never been a thing I've been keen on. 
also i feel like it drives the price up like you pay for one part if you pay for four parts of something it's going to be way more expensive than one game i would have thought so i've never been a fan of, of the, the episodic thing so i'm hoping this is one game hitman 3 job done that said i bought that game and i've never put it into a console yet i've never even tried it um it's the same with deus ex well in deus ex i've got the steelbook of uh, mankind divided i did put it in and play it for like uh, an hour i think at one point and then i got sidelined onto something else so i've still not played that properly and Sekiro was my other steel, but that I've got at the minute. But yeah, another Hitman's. Yeah, there's no, there is always room for Hitman, and I will get to play that Hitman at some point. And when I play Hitman, I always enjoy them. I enjoyed the one on the PS3. I absolutely loved it. I finished that one. Uh, it had a few famous actors in it as well. Really, really liked it. I can't forget what it was called. Hitman. Let me know in the comments below if you can remember Hitman. It's in my collection upstairs. Hitman something. But I absolutely loved it. It was brilliant. Great story, great areas, great different ways to kill people. You know, I love all that stuff. It's really, really cool. So, yeah, it was really, really exciting to see that. don't think the trailer was too massive. There was a second trailer for it, which showed a bit more gameplay, but it wasn't a lot more gameplay. So those were the ones that I marked as big hitters. Um, I'm going to rattle through this lot now because we're hitting the hour mark, people. My God. Um, there was a game called Deathloop, which is by the... Oh, God, I forgot the name of the studio. Same people that um, make Dishonored and Prey and, and all this sort of stuff. The only issue with this company is that every game that they make seems to have the same feel to it. Um, it's like you're playing Dishonored, but in the future, or you're playing Dishonored in the past, or you're playing Dishonored in the 70s, which is what this one feels like. It's not, you know, it differs in the weapons, obviously, but it still feels like a Dishonored engine every time. It's not a bad thing necessarily, but I I kind of have a, a level of interest for these games and then at some point I just flail off and I can't stick with them. So uh, for me, it's not it's not floating me boat as it were, uh, but it does look very cool, very slick, very 70s vibe to it. Deathloop it's called. And honestly, I can't even remember. It's like a parallel journey. I um, can't even remember. The interesting thing about this game is that it has this 70s vibe to it, but I don't think it's actually in the 70s, but it has a 70s vibe to it. And I think this game was shown off about two years ago as a PS4 game. And then we're getting it punted as a PS5 game. So it's like, well, is it though? I think that game will be released on PS4 and PS5. Um, I think... Yeah. It didn't say one way or the other. The first party ones are definitely not going to go on PS4. But the third party ones we've seen. Some of those might hit PS4. Um, I think Deathloop might be one of those though. A lot of these were PlayStation only. Some of these games. Um, but yeah. I don't think that's a new gen game. I think it's just a game that they've taken longer to build. Than they thought they would. And it will hit both, both platforms. And it will hit Xbox as well. Uh, Project Athea, which came up as saying designed for the PS5, funnily enough. Uh, I thought it was going to be a cross-gen, but it came up saying designed for PS5. Looked very, very similar in a way to that demo of not the same, not the same thing at all. <laughs> I'm not saying it is that. It's just the gameplay of it looked very similar in the way that she was moving around to that demo we got from the Unreal Engine 5 on the PlayStation 5. Um... And it was really spectacular to look at. It didn't we didn't get a lot of footage, but I mean it looked great. And I couldn't you couldn't tell whether it was sort of a platform or an RPG, a cross between the two, or what sort of fighting mechanic might be there. There was a lot of jumping and squishing about all over the place, that sort of thing. It looked good though, looked spectacular. Um so yeah, I'm really I really want to see a bit more of that. Uh, there's a big dragon at the end of it, which makes me think that, you know, whenever I see a dragon, I feel like, well, there's probably going to be an RPG element to this. Kind of hoping that there will be, you know. Uh, I think I'm going to have to rattle through this quick. I mean, battery on me camcorder is getting low, people. Um, the Little Devil Inside, which was, these are all games that piqued my interest because they're not necessarily, well, they're not AAA titles. But The Little Devil Inside, it looked like some sort of little adventure game 
and it was bouncing between this sort of little town and then this little guy out on this massive adventure sort of climbing and fighting and riding some sort of horse type creature might have been a horse <laughs> might have been a horse type creature and it was done in this really cute way um i guess almost sort of ashen type vibe to it maybe no was it that one that felt like ashen maybe not but it had a it had a real cuteness to it, and a real it, it piqued my interest for its its expe- it looked like it was going to have an exploration element to it. I, I'm kind of becoming quite keen on looking at games that aren't necessarily asking me to fight a boss every hour or you know, and just sort of give me a little world to adventure about in and have this nice story told to me or quirky story told to me. And that was a game that stood out like that when I watched this trailer. Really good music, really cute little sound effects and noises from their voices and didn't hear any talking. It was more just, you know, grunts and noises that humans make rather than words. And it just looked really, really cool. It looked really, really interesting. And I thought, watching it, I thought I really wouldn't mind getting my hands on that just to see how much interest it would take up in me. More and more we get these demos, so it might be something we get to demo first. And along with it, there was another one that... uh, piqued my interest that had a similar type of visual not vibe but a similar kind of level of design if you know what i mean quality and it was called uh well we talked about it earlier it was the the Kana bridge of of spirits which was the one that was kind of almost sort of zelda like um in the way that it played i said earlier she had this sort of one slash staff type thing that could guide things around as she was trying to do puzzly stuff. And then there was a battle where she seemed to be using it like a bow. It might have been a bow, but off the top of my head, it feels like she was converting it into a bow. Uh, She was throwing, you know, magical arrows at something with this bow and then rolling and dodging and um, fighting some form of bosses. It, it It looked really cool and had a really good vibe to it. I'd be really interested to see more of that game. Absolutely. Um... Oddworld Soulstone. I've never been a big player of Oddworld, but I have to say that after seeing Oddworld Soulstone the Soul Soulstone the other night, Soulstone, it looked spectacular, people. For a 2D I'm gonna say 2D, it's not flat, you know, but but when I say like I'm saying a, a right to left platformer, it, like that, now look as visually stunning as that is just incredible. And I'd be really keen to give that game a go. I really want to step out my comfort zone with some games. Like, I feel like I'm not finishing games that are massive because they bore me after a while, rather than concentrating on games that I might actually finish and enjoy. So, I want to step out my comfort zone this coming gen and try some games that I wouldn't normally do. And all of those games I just mentioned, the two before this, or the three before this, and Oddworld as well. Oddworld just looked incredible. I mean, visually it looked amazing. It looked like it had great humour. Uh, in the little cutscenes and stuff that we saw, even when it moved away from cutscene, even though you were playing some sort of 2D platformer type thing, it looked real. Like it, <laughs> like most of these games, like they, they just looked amazing, like stunning stuff, really, really stunning. And I think like the those sort of games can be really, really addictive. And when they're done that well and the worlds look that interesting, I think it's time for me to start stepping into a few of those worlds and trying those those games out. Um, because just waiting for the next third person over the shoulder AAA title is becoming a little bit laborious, to be fair. Um, and it doesn't always hit home. It doesn't always hit mark. You know, there's the big ones that do that you always remember, and then there's the ones that you never finish. For me, it's like Spider Man. You know, didn't finish it because I just tailed off uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. I tailed off. You know, there's all these games that are just massive that I never finish. And it might be about time that I start games that maybe a seven hour to a 15 hour playthrough is enough for me, you know. Um, so I think we I think we could all do it. Like, I think if we step out of our comfort zone, we'll find some amazing games out there. Um, so Oddworld Soulstone. Yes, looking forward to seeing more of that. Um, Returnal. There's two games that I thought... There was a rumour that the guy from Dead Space... That wrote Dead Space was involved in games that were being shown off that night. And I still don't know which game it was. I initially wrote down that it was Returnal. 
But then there was another game called uh, Pragnata, which looked like a Kojima game when it started. Both of those games look like they could have been written by that guy. They're both spacey type things. And there was large elements of them that looked like they could easily have been made, been, been written by that guy. But I'm assuming that he went into a spacey game. <laughs> Might not have done. Um, Returnal looked incredible. It was like, and, and the protagonist in it looked like a normal human being, like a normal woman rather than some glammed up person that, you know, because she's playing some an astronaut, I think, you know. So she looks like a proper astronaut, you know. Um, and a real character. It gave me, what it gave me actually was this, she seems to be caught in this loop of, weird things happening when she lands on this planet and it almost gave me like an alan wake in space type feel that's how it made me feel watching it and the action looked brilliant in it as well i mean the you know it seemed to be a lot of good action gunplay in it we didn't see more than the gunplay that we saw and a bit of exploration but how deep that game goes i wouldn't mind that game being linearish and working through it the way that you do in alan wake you know you can veer off the path a little bit but nothing too incredible um yeah I, i'm really stoked to see a bit more of that 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 looked like it might be right up my street returnal and the other one that i thought might have been from that guy pragnata was the one with the guy in a sort of space suit and it looked like you're in this sort of weird virtual world don't know the little girls with him but i don't know who the little girl was she didn't seem to be a little girl almost like a robot or something anyway something weird happens they get sucked up into the air and they end up standing on the moon at the end of it, looking down at the earth, saying that they're free or freedom. Or It, it looked odd as hell, but it looked like a Kojima game. When it first started, I, I texted Aaron all the way through this, and I said, this looks like a Kojima game, and actually ended up being a Capcom game, I think. So, yeah, I, I'd be really interested to see more of that. I don't know. Any, we didn't see anything of what the gameplay is. It was just this scene, you know, scanning for the girl, finding the girl weird things happen, get sucked up into the air with the girl, you end up standing on the moon with the girl looking at the earth, so no idea what's going on in that game whatsoever, no gameplay to even judge it on, but uh, interesting nonetheless uh, and then we finished, well we didn't finish up with it but I'm going to mention it last, was Godfall, which we've seen before, and it looks like I don't know what this game is I think it must be an MMO, I think you play it with other people and you are running around with some sort of sword or spear or something, smashing things up. And they put rap music with it because <laughs> I think maybe just watching people smash things up with a spear or a sword wasn't exciting enough. So they put rap music on it, which we talked about earlier, people. It makes it more exciting. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that game. I love an RPG. We all know that on this channel. But like not so much MMOs. Like They become just laborious task boring task mission things and not for me so i don't know that that's going to have anything i'm going to want in it it looks great if you're into that sort of thing but i don't think it's going to be for me right i'm gonna i'm gonna finish up now because we're getting to the camcorder is actually all right i've got two bars left but we are well over an hour so we're going to tail off from the playstation event now it was absolutely awesome in my opinion i loved it i was totally stoked for the for the system Totally stoked for the, the a lot of the games that we've just been talking about. Totally stoked for how this thing's going to look, sound, feel. Visually, as games look on what I've seen so far, just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Cannot wait to get my hands on one, people. Okay, moving swiftly on to a few other things outside of that. Uh, the Last of Us 2 reviews. Well, The Last of Us Part 2, people, if we're going to be honest and proper about it. The Last of Us Part 2 reviews are finally out today. And they are, well, they were, the last time I looked, sitting at 96 out of 100 on Metacritic, people. It's getting stomping reviews. There's always weird people that suddenly don't get it, like, you know, like IGN Japan gave it a 70. <laughs> IGN America gave it a 10 out of 10, you know, so. Um, but, you know, there's all, you're never going to please everybody. I don't think any game's got 100 on Metacritic, has it? Can't possibly have done. So, and there's always going to be haters that are going to hate for no reason whatsoever. Not so much in the reviewers, but in the real people when that happens next week. You know, the rev the reviewer, the, the real people reviewers, there's nobody stopping an Xbox fanboy going on there and putting a review up who's never played it, saying it's shit and giving it a zero. That's what's always annoyed me about Metacritic. So, but it's getting stonking reviews, people. 96 out of 100 on Metacritic is outstanding. I think it's even pipped uh, Persona 5, hasn't it? 
just so that's absolutely outstanding. So I'm really looking forward to that coming next week. Can't believe I've got one another week for it. I'm still a little bit more stoked for Ghost of Tsushima just because I feel like I'm ready for that vibe. Um, there was a tweet this week that I saw from E3 themselves saying that E3 will be back next year. So well, I didn't say next year specifically, but it said E3 will return. Fact. So um we have it from the e3 horse's mouth that they are returning they've not died in the water like everyone was thinking they had because it didn't happen and playstation hadn't gone anyway and blah 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 they are adamant they're coming back so that's nice to see i still want to see that event happening um i think we all get excited for it. it's a great thing to have every year seeing all those communities come together is just great for the the whole community and finally the rock has come no he's not um, I've been playing Sekiro this week, people. I finally put it back in. The last time I played it, it was on camera for you guys. There's four parts up there. Aaron Brew was on the mic with me. It was when it first came out. He'd come stay with me. And I was doing all right with it. And then I just couldn't get my head around some of the harder bosses and characters. Um, Aaron has since, just recently, he's just platinumed it. Which is an awesome platinum to have. And he's platinumed a couple of the Dark Souls ones as well, think has he can't remember now bloodborne maybe um anyway he's been doing well with his plats but that's a cracking plat to have so he's just planning it and every time he talks about it and with ghost of shimmer coming up I, I've, I've had this itch to play it so i just put it in the other night and i thought i'll give it a go let's just see how we go and i i'm really good with the bog standard enemies like i've got it like you know block boosh block boosh you know like I, i've got it i know what i'm doing sneaking and you know it's the big enemies when the it's you can't just repost or or block, and you have to skip or move or do a different type of jump or a, you know go to the side if it's one move, jump up if it's another move. That's the stuff that's my brain. So just hit this. It's not a boss boss, but it's like a mini boss troll thing right at the beginning of the game, and um, well not right at the beginning, but a little segment in, and I'll be I've tried to beat the bastard two hours last night before this event started. <laughs> And I feel like I, I know how to beat him. I just I just didn't quite do it on a couple of occasions. There's a tiny bit of bar left on him. And the second time, I had him, and some little guy that I hadn't noticed was still alive around the corner of a wall came out. While the <laughs> so I then had to worry about him and the big guy. And oh, fucking hell, people. But I tell you, it's really fun gameplay. Like, if you just understand that you're going to die a lot, and just go in. The other thing is, there wasn't a massive run-up to that guy. Like, I can literally kill two people and I'm back at him. So it was quite easy just to get some practice in. He's going to... Excuse me. He's going to get it, people. He is going to get it. That guy's got it coming, I tell you. I've got his number, people. So I might be giving that another go on Sunday or something. Uh, really good fun. Uh, to a point. You do get frustrated, but it's still fun. I don't know if I want to play it too heavily because I am conscious that Ghost of Tsushima is coming I know it's not the same type of game but it's it is the same world and I don't want to sicken myself with the Japanese world too much it well not that you can sicken yourself but you know what I mean you I don't want to have played a lot of a Japanese world and then be understoked for Ghost of Tsushima coming so I may just dabble in it um, because I'm still got Kingdom Hearts to play and I've still got Final Fantasy 7 original to, to play or hard, hard HD'd if you will so there you are, people. Yeah, so there you are. Good grief. Well, we got through it. We got through it. I'd hope to talk a bit longer about some of the other games, but uh, we have we have cracked. I don't I don't think I've ever done a vlog that was at an hour and fifteen minutes, nearly, people. <laughs> um, actually, the camcorder's all right. Still got two two bars on it. If it gets to one, I'll start getting worried. Probably lose the whole lot if it goes dead on me. So there you are. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope me bringing my excitement for everything has brought somebody some joy. Um, and for those that didn't manage to see it yesterday or haven't watched it, I've, this little summary I've given you in this hour and 15 minutes has given you my thoughts and opinions, broken down the clips without the guff, all that sort of stuff. So I hope it's given some... Let me know, people. Hammer the comments below and let me know what you think of the design of the console, what you think of the colours, what you think of the games, what you thought of the whole event. Did you love it like I did? Did you not really love it at all? It's okay if you didn't love it like I did. I mean, I'm, you know, <laughs> saying through my video, like, what are you on about? But, you know, it's absolutely fine. Like, not everyone's going to be pleased with everything all of the time, people. It's what makes the world an interesting place. We're never going to agree on everything. 
So it's absolutely fine. If you didn't like it, please let me know and let me know what you were underwhelmed by. Um, but for me, I was absolutely stoked. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was a cracking way. I thought they blew the roof off the place as much as there wasn't a place. But I don't think that could have gone any better than it went, in my personal opinion. Cracking first party titles, cracking third party titles, cracking console. And we know what's happening. The only thing we haven't got is a price yet or prices as it happens. So hopefully that will come soon enough. We're bound to see more games, people. But I think that was a lot to take in in one sitting anyway. It was absolutely brilliant. So there you are, people. Flaggons up once again to you all. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you in this vlog of mine today. And I shall see you all in the next one, folks. Take it easy. Bye.